This is a, a presentation to support the newly released mineral resources and reserves for goldfields, which are issued as of the th as of the 31st of December 2014 uh, at a gold price of $1,300 US uh, for reserves. Uh, and what I'm going to do is is not just give a, uh, an executive summary of what's actually in the resource and reserve supplement. I do do want to use the opportunity. Uh, to emphasize a couple of key themes that I think is important you take away uh, from this session this afternoon. Uh, so there'll be a bit of a, a fresh angle on, on uh, some of the numbers from this session as well, uh, which I hope you'll uh, benefit from. And before I jump into the headline numbers, which I would normally do, uh, I think we just need to spend a couple of minutes highlighting what is a, a fairly new, uh, fresh aspect to the, the goldfields planning. And this is how we embed the goldfield strategy into the entire planning process and annual planning calendar. Now, I'm not going to go into depth on uh, the goldfield strategy, which is well documented in the integrated annual review, uh, of which there are hard copies there as well. But obviously, there are three key focus areas that drive the technical side of, of the business, which is focused on quality cash generative ounces. So it's not about ounces for ounces' sake, and it's not about racking up ounces on a reserve declaration. They've got to be quality cash generative ounces. It's about positioning for margin and growth, uh, and also about strengthening the, the decentralized goldfields model, which is about uh, empowered regions. So I'm just going to go through those three areas. But I think it, it's particularly significant to highlight that when you consolidate the group's life of mine plans, so you take all eight operating life of mine plans and consolidate them together, it, it meets or, or exceeds a 15% free cash flow position. So that, sh that shows you that the planning process is, is strongly wired in to the strategy of the company. Uh, and I think it's, imp I, I, I'm aware that not all peer group companies uh, have that strong wiring of between strategy and life of mine reserves. But I think it's, it, it's uh, very healthy for us to be able to demonstrate that at $1,300 an ounce, we have that 15% free cash flow position. Now what that does is uh, it gives us headroom or a level of buttressing against uh, gold, pr gold prices or metal prices that track at lower than our planning gold price for a period of time. So it, it's given us that uh, protection on commercial viability with fluctuating gold prices. Uh, so those are commercially very strong viable life of mine plans. If, if I also go into the margin and, and growth aspect a little bit more, uh, it's not just in 2014, but I think over the last three years, we've put a concerted effort into unplugging marginal mining, or what we often say is trade, trading dollar mining. Uh, and we've taken a, a lot more circumspect, uh, intuitive view on what makes it into our, not only our business plans and our reserves, but also our 12-month operational planning. And there are some very strong filters in place to make sure that the mining is always contributing to the bottom line and generating cash. So there's been a lot of cleanup over the last three, three years on, on any marginal mining where practical. Due to uh, mine design constraints and scheduling constraints that you'll typically get, typically get in any open pit or underground mining scenario, you will always take uh, some ounces that have more of a skinny margin than you're looking for in your optimized planning. And that's the nature of, of the constraints of underground and open pit mining that uh, all, all miners experience. Uh, and then, just on capital expenditure, there, there's a right time and a wrong time to spend stay in business capital. And you need to be acutely aware of the best time to incur that cost. And we've got a, a, a very focused, uh, stringent scheduling approach to stay in business capital spend. And we, we only spend it when it uh, it's going to contribute to capital efficiency uh, and when it actually adds value to the, the bottom line. So it's not about spending uh, staying business capital up front when it's not specifically required. So it's that capital efficiency and return on investment uh, that is the focus for staying business capital spend. And then, as I said, we've got a decentralized model where all of our regions are strongly empowered to run sustainable, successful businesses. And the accountability for execution and delivery is very firmly anchored in the region and particularly on the mining operations themselves. That's where the accountability for execution and delivery lies. 
And I think it's that empowerment of the regions, along with making sure they're correctly resourced and skilled to do that, that makes a decentralized model successful. And as I said, the accountability is, is in the regions uh, for health, safety, and delivery on the plans. So the 52 million ounce reserve that you'll see reported for Goldfields, which is a, a managed gold reserve as opposed to attributable, uh, delivers that 15% free cash flow margin. So how do we uh, achieve this? Uh, it's, it's not, unfortunately, simply by waving a magic wand. You, you have to wire this into the way you do your planning and your business. And what we've just put up on this slide here is a, a simplified schematic of the annual planning calendar. So this is a process the group goes through on an annual basis. And if I just take you through the steps very quickly, num uh, box number one is really highlighting the, uh, the defined corporate strategy and the need, the need to deliver on that. Now stage two, and that's currently happening across the group right now in, uh, in April, that is the period where every region and mining asset has the opportunity to uh, strategically challenge the paradigm look for all opportunities, uh, trade-off options against each other in the search for the best value option. And obviously the best value option wires back into the strategy of the company. Now in some cases, uh, we've had in excess of 20, 25 different strategic options make it onto the table for a particular mining asset. A lot of those can be stripped out very quickly. Uh, that They might not be practical or they might have a, a, an unacceptable risk profile but we quickly hone in on uh, the best value options for each mining asset through that particular strategic planning process in box two. We then have a strategic review panel made up of uh, expertise agglomerated from around the group who will actually do peer review and stress test those models that have been generated within each region from each operation and consolidate into a group portfolio model. Now, that group portfolio model then moves through to the Goldfields executive who have a, a full review of the model and they look at all the numbers, uh, the production profiles, the trade-offs through a corporate or group level lens. So the regionalization is taken away. At this stage, the executive are wearing uh, or, or looking at the model through a, a, a group level lens. That, that'll go through a level of uh, optimization and ultimately, we arrive at a signed off uh, group portfolio, strategic group portfolio model uh, revisited on an annual basis.